Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use SolidWorks design tables to control the material of different configurations. Let's do it. I'm gonna be using the 321 blocks that I created in another video. I'm gonna jump right into that design table that we've already created. To control the material, I like to start by thinking about the default. I wanna make sure that the default product, default part, has a material assigned. In this case, it's AISI 1020, which is a steel. And uh, because it was used as the default, I know all the other parts have the same exact material. So we're in good shape. We know, first of all, that the uh, default product has got a material assigned. Now we're gonna go into the design table. We're gonna open up the design table. Once the design table gets giant like this, I like to do two things. One is I like to open it up in a separate window, which means it's gonna open up Excel and I'm not working in Excel embedded in SolidWorks. Then the other thing I like to do is, aside from the, the configuration name, which is in column P, I like to take uh, most of the other things that I've been working on, uh, such as these ones, and hide them so that they're just out of the way. Now, in a previous video, we showed how you could add new features, and so we added in um, a thread. I'm just gonna hide that one. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the material. What you need to do for the material is the code is a library, 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 colon materials at, and then we need the name of this file. And the name of the file is right there. It is 321DT, 321DT. Now it's possible that I have this, that I might need an S or not have an S after uh, in this line right here. If I don't type it right, it's not gonna be readable. And I've just checked in the guidebook and there is no S right there. So I'm gonna take off that S, make sure I spelled this right. I don't wanna end up with problems later uh, because I have not spelled things right. One of the things that's going on with the design table is you're opening up one program, SolidWorks, and another program, Excel, and you've got to go back and forth to get them to talk to each other. So what I'm going to do right now is just jump out of this and tell SolidWorks that I'm interested in knowing the materials of the parts. Uh, and then I'm going to jump back into Excel to see if it will self-populate, uh, which I do not believe that it will. Uh, but I'm giving SolidWorks the chance to know that I care about this, which I think is interesting. And so now I'm going to type in um, the material that I want there. So I'm going to type in um, SolidWorks space materials colon. And I just like to start with this one called brass just to see if I can get it to change. Okay. So if I've spelled that right, we should we should work. It should work. So let's see what happens. So it's thinking, 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 which I'm glad that it's thinking about this. And I don't even know if my default part is selected right now, but we'll find out in just a second. Okay, so now my part looks like it's brass. That's good, at least it looks that way. If I go over here, my material is assigned to be brass which is excellent. So I've controlled the material in the design table. I'm gonna open up the design table again now and do it for all the configurations. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take this value and I'm gonna copy it all the way down. And I believe what SolidWorks is gonna do is, uh, uh, you know, to some mystery to me, it's not going to, I believe it's not going to save all of these as brass. Um, Instead, it's doing some other things. Okay, let's go back into the design table and see what it did. Now we're getting SolidWorks and Excel to talk to each other and all these kinds of wonderful things. And um, great. So what's happened now is it's gone into the default. Now it's done what I wanted it to do, which is that it went in and read in the existing um, configuration, what material has been assigned to it. And for all these configurations, AISI 1020 was assigned. So the, AI, the, AISI, the AISI 1020 is what we want for the default version. Be careful, by the way, when you're moving SolidWorks, you see what it just did right there? It took my 1020 and incremented it to a 1019, uh, which is not, there's no such material there. So I need to put that back to a 1020. Um, in fact, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste that one right in there. 
And then uh, let's go let's go back now uh, to get SolidWorks to read in this stuff. Okay, and our default should be back to AISI 1020. It looks like AIS, AISI 1020, and it's now listed as AISI 1020. Now we're going to say to ourselves that let's take all of the four bys, the four by somethings, and let's change their material to something else. A nice easy way to do this is just to go right into that configuration, four by four by four, for example, go into the design tree, edit the material, and uh, we can pick another material. So let's do the following. Let's pick a titanium. And the reason why I want to pick a titanium is um, is that frankly you can't color steel very well and you can color aluminum but aluminum doesn't really make sense for 321 blocks but titanium is anodizable I'm not even sure that's the word but it can be anodized which means we can change its color so we've just done that with the 4x4 let's save this one just in case uh, the design table is going to want to see that it's been saved come in here and we edit our design table and one of these the 4x4 by the four by four by four, I guess it is, should now appear as titanium, which it does. So let's take all of our, let's take all of our four by four things, I think is to right there, yep. And we're gonna make all of these titanium. We're gonna jump out of this, then we're gonna go check the design table, excuse me, we're gonna go check SolidWorks and check the configurations and see how we've done. This might be the end of the SolidWorks tutorial that we need to do in terms of design tables as you've learned to do lots of different things. Okay, great. We have the 4x4x4, four by four by four. it's purple. Well, we've told it we want it to be purple. Let's see if the material is correct. And the material is titanium, that is excellent. We're just gonna check one of these other ones right here, 4x4x1, four by four by and this one actually looks like titanium, which is slightly troubling. So let's go see what's going on there. This one is titanium. Now I feel like I need to check a few things. Um, okay, so now we have our, uh, all of these four buys are actually titanium, but they're not coming up with the color that we want. And I think that we can just solve that by relinking SolidWorks and Excel together by jumping, back into our design table and then back into SolidWorks. And I think that that will, I think that might solve it. Okay, these are still titanium, which is excellent. If I come over here, I better check my color code. Okay, good, all the color codes here are different, which means that it is, um, it is not defaulted somehow back to, okay. Great, so now our titanium is showing up at the color RGBs that we specified before. So what did we need to do? We just needed to you know, get SolidWorks and Excel to talk to each other that one extra time so that it could know what color the titanium should become. Okay, that's it. Uh, you've learned how to control material in the design table. That's it, see you in the next video.